Greetings folks, Sex here yet again for one of my entries for the 13 Slays of Halloween. Today I'm looking at Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence, the final entry of the Maniac Cop trilogy. Now, the funny thing about this film is this film was a mess. It literally is a mess. It has two problems going against it. That's number one. Number two, it, it's after Maniac Cop 2, which is one of the greatest sequels of all four of them. I mean, you just... You just can't top Maniac Cop 2. I mean, all you can go is down. And the quality does go down on this one. I mean, in fact, I mean, they just show clips of Maniac Cop 2 for uh, the beginning half of the movie and a lot of other parts of the movie. But the thing is, though, it's still a fun film. I mean, it's a mess, yes. The plot makes almost no sense whatsoever. I mean, you have Matt Cordell, once again portrayed by Robert Zadar. God bless him, he's amazing in this film, God, too. And basically, he's brought back via voodoo means this time around. You know, I mean, now that he's pretty much, his spirit was uh, peacefully uh, quenched by the actions of what happened in Maniac Cop 2, but now he's brought back to life again. And really, that's where the part of the movie doesn't make much sense because this voodoo guy brings it back he's like yeah I know your soul's all pretty much hurting still and you wanted to be brought back but really there's no real point to this voodoo guy other than Desex Machina he's alive again and that's really the only point of this guy I mean you don't really understand this voodoo guy and that's probably the blame for the script originally that originally was supposed to be about uh basically Cordell being alive no matter what that happened in the events in the part two and basically the voodoo part was basically a subplot for the detective uh, who was going to be uh, a different character from who was in this one in this one he's uh, Lieutenant McKinney uh, Lieutenant, bleh, Lieutenant McKinney played by Robert Davi again uh, pretty much reprised his role in the sequel and uh, basically the whole voodoo thing angle was dropped to this character instead, and really it makes zero sense. And honestly, I mean, even though Julius Harris does an amazing job with that nice booming voice of his, his character has no, it may, he has no sense in this thing. I mean, he, all his point is is like pretty much to try and make another man cop, but it, it doesn't really succeed. And it's pretty much more bright a maniac cop. I mean. He, there's no character to him other than being this presence that talks like this and says to both Cordell and uh, McKinney that you're both the same. And really, in that regard, they are both the similar. I mean, the if the sequel didn't tell you that pretty much McKinney has a lot to do with uh, Cordell, this one does too. I mean, basically, that they had both have a friend, uh, I mean, yeah, Kate, in this one. But then, then I, once again, this character, zero, uh, pretty much thing, except for the beginning part of the film, where she basically, her and McKinney talk, have a nice little moment with them uh, showing his friendship with her and her pretty much way she deals with uh, her shift when she's on duty. And she uses like all sorts of uh, guns that are not supposed to be allowed by the precinct, and it kind of gets her in trouble when uh, she runs into Jackie Earl Haley as the most scene-stealing ham fisted guy I ever saw in this movie and he just really turns into a 1211. Anytime he's on screen this movie is just amazing to watch. I mean that's one of the best parts I can say of this movie. You want to see something amazing to see Jackie Earl Haley in the first five minutes of this movie. He just goes incredibly bonkers and he's amazing to watch. I mean, it's basically uh, something out of Paul Verhagen I want to say because I mean I felt like I was watching Robocop for a second before uh, I was reminded, oh no, this is a Maniac Cap film. And, uh, and sure enough, here comes Cordell. And pretty much he's doing, pretty much trying to clear uh, Maniac yeah, Kate, as the media dubs her. Uh, pretty much clearing her record and also trying to woo her, really. So, I mean, <sighs> this movie's a mess. But it's a fun mess. It's a great mess. And, uh, I mean, the, another good part is Robert Dobby again. He reprises his role. He's getting much more meatier stuff to do. I mean, a more active role, too. I mean, he's running and shooting. He's pretty much 
Mr. Man a, a mission this time around. I mean, he was in the first one, second one, but basically this one he's more hands-on with his things. And I mean, I like Robert Dobby. He's a very good protagonist. I mean, he's very fun in this movie. He's always having a blast. And I mean, this movie does. I mean, like I said, does pretty much show clips of Maniac Cop too, but it does its own little thing where basically this movie is much more vicious. I mean, this is one of the most vicious horror movies I've seen in a long time. I mean, the only thing I think that's more vicious than this movie when it comes to the, uh, the kills is probably, uh, I'm there was a Toby Hooper film in the late 70s of crocodiles, and basically there was a scene where that guy gets, uh, one of the guys gets a scythe stuck in his neck and pretty much he's still alive going oh, before he's finally finished off I think it's eaten alive I think that's what the name of the movie is but uh, basically in this movie it doesn't happen just once it happens twice in this movie and Cordell just goes just nuts on these two characters in this movie I mean they really do deserve what's coming to them but I mean Jesus there's this this, this, this to Cordell this time around I mean he just he pretty much takes a, a heart monitor thing and he just pretty much just penalates the guy until he just <laughs> and then there's another guy, poor guy, who gets an x-ray machine turned on with no lead to protect him and oh god, that poor guy. Ouch. Ow. But there's, there's some other great kills in this, they're pretty much a typical of this series and that's the uh, pretty much this mouthy uh, jogger <laughs> goes up the Cordell. He <laughs> just starts just going on this rant saying, like, oh, that cop deserved it. Oh, she just, like, just just ragging on Maniac Cave. You know who it is. And you're like, okay, Cordell's going to waste this. <laughs> There's no chance this guy's going to survive that to this rant. And sure enough, Cordell just tosses him in the air and you're like, holy shit. And all of a sudden, you just put the pistols out there. It's just an amazing kill. I mean, that's the thing I could say about these things. These, these kills in these movies are just amazing. And I, it, it just goes up to a lot of these kills in this one. I mean, that's what I really could say about the series. That every time it, it, it finds its way to turn up to a level in certain ways. The sec sequel, it was the action. It was the uh, pretty much to make you go, holy crap, they killed, oh my god, they killed, oh jeez. And then pretty much just the way they start going off the action with like the, pretty much the shootout in the police station. Here, it's more the kills themselves, and also, I mean, Cordell goes a very, uh, he's very put the well thought in some of these kills, too, I mean, like, besides the ones I mentioned before, but there's another kill, he does the mini guys, the, uh, the pretty much sleazy media people who uh, ruined Mania Kid's name in this, and, I mean, it's like, how the hell did he, but he, how did he, but, uh, I, I just turned the mind off, like, I'm just, I'm enjoying the ride, I mean, Besides, you have Cordell, you have Robert Dobby, you have all these other pretty much character actors. You pretty much have the Agent Johnson reunion from Die Hard. I mean, you have Grandal Bush with Robert Dobby in a scene. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm just waiting for Bruce Willis or somebody to like say, Johnson? Agent Johnson? Agent Johnson? No relation. I'm just waiting for that to happen, but it never happens. But it's a fun little scene between Grandal Bush and Robert Dobby. And also, you have Dick. Uh, the lead cop from that, played by, uh, what's his face, the guy from the Ripples Club. But he, he again plays an assholey character, and pretty much he does what he does. He's a slimy character in this, too, and he's good at this. But really, the real stars of this are Robert Davi, uh, Robert Dadar, and basically Jack Earl Haley. I mean, Earl Haley is just so heavy, but he's so good at this. But Robert Dobby's really good to root for, too. I mean, he's really good in this movie. I mean, if there's anything else to say, you hear Robert Dobby in a very protagonist role, this action hero. I mean, there's, just, there's a lot of good stuff in this. And the best part I could say about this movie is basically the climax. I mean, you, you think the last one's climax was good? Oh, dear God, this one's better. I mean, you think it ends up like, okay, basically, mad cop gets on fire, and he carries Kate's body, and basically, boom. That's it. End of movie, right? Rob dives in the ambulance, has to the girl, let's wait for the end, and all of a sudden, here comes Cordell, on freaking fire, and he, he's in a police car, he just starts hammering his hand at the freaking window of the ambulance, and he's just possessed this kill <laughs> McKinney this time around. <laughs> he's not quiet, going down quietly, and it's just an amazing sequence. I think it's like a five, ten minute sequence. 
it is an amazing chase sequence. I mean, the stunt work is amazing, and just the fact that this guy's on fire while he's pushing cars around. And then there's this little scene of the guy pretty much going back to what uh, Zadar does with his hands in the movie, and this is a great part where he just taps his hand on the car's the wheel. It's like, no, okay. And it's like, guns it. And it's like, oh, God, this is amazing. I mean, that's the best part I could say about this movie, that it's still fun, no matter what. I mean, it's disappointing. It's not better than me and Cop 2, but it's still a fun ride. Zadar just makes it precious in this. I mean, he's good. He's, I mean, this is, this is my favorite role of his. And basically, he is just, just kicks this role and owns it. And it's sad that he never got a chance to play it one more time because it does tease another Man Cop film and it never happened because of so much infighting between the producer and the director and the producer, the other producer in this. Uh, they were just going at uh, One producer was going after the director and the director's like, fuck you, I did my film, this is it. And the producer's like, no, this has to be a 90 minute film. And you get to see that. I mean, even, I mean, I, mean, I actually saw the, the latest edition of it. They pretty much took away the director's name and pretty much gave him Al Smithy. And, uh, I mean, this is still a fun film. A better recommendation of this is that if you see the first two films, just see the first and second film, this is just a film you just want to watch. Like, you're like having a horrible day. You just turn, put this film on, and it just washes away. And you see this reeking of B movie madness. And it's just fun. It's just. It's one of those movies you just have to watch and just enjoy for its uh, campiness. And it's a great camp. I mean, I can't help but love this film. I mean, it's a bad film, but it's such a good, bad film. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, that's what I can say. It's a great film. And that's pretty much what I can say about the series. I mean, even the worst entry is still amazingly fun. And it, it just shows you how much love the writer in this movie did, and also this entire series, Larry Cohen. I mean, he was amazing. He was, like, so sharp on this series. And the direction, even though uh, William Lustig gives, like, a half-assed performance in this in direction, he's still good. And even the producer who did this, he's good at this. I mean, he understands the property. I mean, I just can't help but enjoy this film. I mean, it's bad, but it's good. I mean, that's kind of why I saw this film, like, before the first and second one again, because I was like, okay, I know how this is going to play out. If I see all three in order, it's not going to work well. So I just had to put this in before all this, and then I watched the first one, and then I watched the second one. And it works better that way, because basically you can't just go into this after the two and just like, oh, shit, this is not that good. But, I mean, just give it an honest opinion. That's pretty much what I'm saying. It's a fun film still, and that's all I have to say about it today. It, it's fun. Of course, now I'm going into what you guys wanted next time around. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Ooh. I'm going to be on a bummy ride now, aren't I? Oh, boy. Here come the, the picks. I wonder if I'll survive this go-around. Uh, we'll find out. Tune in next time for that.